Arizona sports. Breaking news. Well, Baxter Holmes wasn't lying. Uh, he said soon, and it came soon after he tweeted uh, from Sham Sharania. And there's a statement also from the NBA. The NBA has suspended Suns owner Robert Sarver for one year from the Suns and Mercury organization based on a league investigation. Sarver has also been fined $10 million and uh, must complete training program focused on respect and appropriate workplace conduct. That coming down uh, just seconds ago from uh, the NBA. Um, a one-year suspension and a ten million, and a $10 million, million fine. dollar fine. So the league found it found this investigation to be uh, untoward and the workplace culture toxic enough to suspend him for a year and fine him heavily and and make him commit to training and that kind of stuff. But they did not make him sell the franchise, which is a lot, which is what Al Sharpton uh, and others were requesting. Uh, I think it's interesting that this all popped um, this morning. There was a story on AZ Central about a former marketing department employee. Her name is Ashley, and she tweeted out, quote, Dear at the NBA, I know it's not a priority for you at this point, but a lot of us trusted you, broke our NDA, and were traumatized all over again speaking to the attorneys you assigned because we thought you'd do the right thing. Phoenix Suns, you've let hundreds down. Um, she wrote, and then right after that, boom, this this has all come down. Yeah, I wonder what if there will be any reaction from from that particular woman because I saw that tweet late mm -hmm. late last week, and yeah, uh, it did it did get some traction. Uh, but yeah, one year suspension, ten million dollar fine. The NBA Communications put out a statement today uh, that uh, among the key findings, Mr. Sarver on at least five occasions occasions during his tenure with the Suns Mercury organization repeated the N word when recounting the statements of others. Uh, Mr. Sarver engaged in instances of inequitable conduct toward female employees, made many sex uh, related comments in the workplace, made inappropriate comments about the physical appearance of female employees and other women, and on several occasions engaged on inappropriate in inappropriate physical conduct towards male employees. Uh, Mr. Sarver engaged in uh, demeaning and harsh treatment of employees, included, including by yelling and cursing at them. Those findings right there, those three bullet points, mm -hmm. very much in line from the report that Baxter Holmes published on ESPN.com, uh, the details of which you can, you can still find, but that was last November. Mm -hmm. uh, so pretty much what was described in that report is apparently what the NBA found in conducting its investigation and interviews with current and former employees uh, pretty much in line we like could down, download right the down entire the report i guess i wonder uh i wonder what this is going to do to people because again it's it's when 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 people break their ndas they do so out of uh, out of not assurance but uh, they are risking a lot is is what they are doing and so i i wonder what the, how this is going to be perceived i wonder if if this is going to affect the nba's um, reputation as being that progressive that, that they've always tried to be exactly the opposite of what the NFL is when it comes to these kind of things. We also know Robert Sarver lawyered up heavily for all of this. And and again, I uh, I wasn't privy to all the reporting in this report. It, if you can download the whole thing, I'm done. 48, 48 pages. 43 48, pages. 48, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, 43 okay. pages, sorry. So I, I'm also wondering how the fan base will react now because if he was guilty enough to be suspended for a year, mm -hmm. how will they react when he comes back and he's still the owner? This guy that, that committed, you know, did something that was worthy of a year suspension, a $10 million fine, is still the owner of your team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, listen, and, and again, I think that a lot of this really uh, – I've, I've noticed in sports, a lot of times you take your cues from the teams about the nature of their owners. And and to this point, the culture of the basketball operations department has kind of remained intact. So I don't know what you can infer from that. I'll be very curious to see what the reaction to this is. This is kind of this is kind of splitting the middle, if you will. Yeah, I'm just thumbing through a lot of this. Uh, there's there's a lot of detail in this report that came out from the. The law firm that conducted this, uh, and we're talking about ten months since that story broke too. This this has been a very lengthy lengthy process, um, and here you see the results. Um, I, yeah, I, I think Jared asked uh, an interesting question. Uh, I think there were a lot of members of the fan base that were hoping mm -hmm. that Robert Sarver would be forced to to, to sell, right. similar to the Donald Sterling situation right. with the Clippers. Um, 
you know. And that has to, and that has largely to do with a lot of just the dysfunction that marked a decade before James Jones took over as general manager. Absolutely. Of which he is responsible for, being the owner of the franchise. I'm trying to think of other examples where a sports owner had been suspended for a lengthy period of time and then came back and was still the owner. George Steinbrenner. George Steinbrenner was the only one I could think of. Well, it's also it's also interesting too because Robert Sarver vehemently denied all of this. He did. But again, we're talking about a 10 month investigation. Mm-hmm. It says over 100 people witnessed this reported behavior. Yeah, that's a lot. So, yeah, so I'll be, yeah, like, like you, uh, there's, I, I don't know, I, I can't predict what it's going to be. I'm, I'm sure uh, uh, what's uh, foremost to Suns fans is the basketball team and the mm-hmm. state of the basketball team. It had but, its own drama. Yeah, well, yeah, how about it? But I think in the in the case of this, some of these stories are just are just it, it just paints the picture of just a horrible place to work at. For if yeah. you're it in for, certain, for a lot of people, for a lot of people, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 right there it's Page in the report you're reading. Five of the report since the investigation's inception, three hundred and twenty people have been interviewed. Among the interviewees were two hundred two current employees, including senior team executives, one hundred former employees, twelve sons, minority owners, and Sarver. The investigators also conducted follow-up interviews of certain witnesses. From page 11, numerous witnesses reported that Sarver's aggressive behavior in the workplace well exceeded what might be expected of a demanding leader. Witnesses said that Sarver's workplace actions often seemed intended solely to provoke a reaction from employees to embarrass them or assert dominance over them. Yeah. Yeah, listen, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I've got a lot of thoughts on this, but, but I, I I'm going to re- read this report first. Yeah, it, absolutely. So, so to me, I, I think the bottom line is, I, I don't know it, if Adam Silver is going to address this, but I think he needs to. Yeah. Because if, if, if being caught being racist on tape is enough to make you Donald Sterling sell the team, then it, it, at, at what level does this workplace toxicity and misogyny and that kind of stuff, what level do you have to reach? Yeah. And you wonder if this is the punishment and then during the next year while he's suspended, wheels go in motion where they sort of like nudge him out rather than saying like the punishment is we're forcing you out, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I don't I, think so I, I think this was a. I think Robert Sarver was fighting this tooth and nail. Is what I think. Yeah, in case you're just joining us, uh, announced today by the NBA, a uh, one-year suspension for Suns Mercury owner Robert Sarver, a ten million dollar fine, and also uh, needing to complete uh, sensitivity training, for, I guess, for lack of a better term. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, 43-page report released today that started in November, and again, over 320 people interviewed. Uh, I feel like Bick right now. Like, I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, pound into this before we can really talk much about it. But, uh, again, I think Jared brings up a good point. What does this do to the basketball team? We're 13 days away from media day. Yeah. Uh, you know, training camp starts the day after that, and we're not far away from um, you know preseason action for a team that the the guys on the floor, the coaching staff, support staff, they still have championship aspirations. We wondered about effects of this last year, uh, and now we're t- talking about a second straight season where this is at least hovering over the Phoenix Suns in, in some way. That media day was already going to be fascinating. Yes. And volatile, and who knows what you're going to get out of it. 